Ah, and we are live! Welcome back to Takes by Fans. We got a great show for you today. As always, we are live every single day at noon Eastern. If you want to watch live, head over to twitch.tv slash Takes by Fans. If you want to watch but not live, head over to our YouTube channel, Takes by Fans. We post all of our shows and clips of the show there on a daily basis. And if you just want to listen, we are on podcasting apps, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio. So, <clears throat> however you want to watch it, listen, we've got you covered multiple ways. All right, today is a big old Sunday. We are, what, uh, four days, four or five days away from the NFL draft coming up this Thursday, April 29th. We're having our live draft show, so come out. Doesn't matter what fan you're, you're, you're a fan of, what team you're a fan of, just come out, hang out, and, you know, hopefully all of our teams get better. I mean, that's what we're all hoping for on Thursday. So come out. We're going to be there live uh, probably 7.30 Eastern time uh, at twitch.tv slash shakes by fans. So come out and join us there. Uh, so, you know, these uh, these last couple of days leading up until the NFL draft, we're going to kind of shore up our our rankings and kind of, you know, what how we rank the quarterbacks in the draft class, how we rank the running backs, wide receivers, defensive backs. And then we'll be doing our mock draft as well leading up until Thursday. Not quite sure what date we're going to do that, whether it's tomorrow, Monday, maybe Tuesday, or do we leave it till Wednesday? Do we do it Thursday? I don't think we're going to do it Thursday, but I think we might do it either Monday or Wednesday, depending on uh, when we squeeze it in. So, uh, But today on the show, what we're doing is looking at Shakur Brown, a uh, cornerback from Michigan State. So we'll be seeing him uh, today and then our, our kind of NFL draft prospect of the day uh, trying to squeeze in you know these last couple of prospects in um, all right, and then we're obviously breaking down the NBA from last night, doing a money maker for tonight's action, and yeah, the classic takes by fan show. So let's just jump right into it uh, today. And uh, there was UFC on last night, and holy moly, folks, some great fights. And let's start with this one: Chris Weedman. Oh my god! Oh my god! Broke his entire leg like ten seconds into the fight. Goes for the light kick right here, and he just snapped his leg. Just breaks man look at this look at this the, the ankle is sideways the entire foot literally just breaks the entire leg just breaks kicking this man the man the first kick folks we're talking about 13 seconds into this fight he goes for like the first move a kick and it just breaks his entire leg it shatters it look at this he can't his whole ankle is twisted his leg is freaking adjacent now you know 45 degree angles off off its axis I mean man oh man and then he tries to put some weight on it and obviously he's gonna buckle right down to the ground folks folks what the hell is this man you train you know months for this fight in the first 15 seconds you break your own leg by just trying to hit the kick this man so that's how uh the uh oh my and look at <laughs> They just look at I me. Mean, they can't even look. They're like, oh, my fucking goodness. What the heck just happened? And the fighter's like, oh, my God. The ref's like, oh, God. And this guy's just in pain on the ground being like, did this really just happen to me? Oh, my God. Crushing. Crushing, man. Crushing. 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 And then the ref's like, oh, hang on. Actually, actually, I, I actually have to go and make sure that this man's all right. Uh, can't let this man die on me over here. Pass out due to shock. So he goes, tends to the guy, Weidman. And man, oh, man. 13 seconds, 15 seconds, leg broken, fight over, yikes, probably will never fight again, I mean, how do you come back from that, how do you kind of re repair that leg and then go and fight and train with all that torque right back on it, I mean, I don't think you could trust it after that, how can you trust your own leg after this, so... That's how kind of, you know, the main fight started here on the UFC, the main cards. Um, and then it even got better from there. We even got better because then we got the Usman fight and holy moly, he just freaking took one to the face, man. I don't know what's worth. The, the, what, what's, what was worse last night, the leg snap or this big old, oh my God, Sprite coming out of this man's head. That's how freaking hard he got hit. Watch it one more time right here. Just... Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Usman just destroys this man. One punch. A minute into the second round right here. Just goes for it. Boom. 
boom, out, Sprite comes out of his head, he's unconscious, he's done, and then, I mean, all these extra freaking hits at the end, I mean, man, oh man, probably should have called the fight a little quicker, a little, should have got on that horse a little bit quicker over there, because uh, he was done, he was down after that, I mean, after this hit, after it connected, I mean, done, down, 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 gotta call it, gotta, gotta call the fight right now, um, and then, man, oh man, one, two, three, four, five, what was that, five or six, just hammer punches right in the face when you're unconscious. So, man, oh, man, UFC last night was truly great. And then we even get this great picture right here. I mean, holy cow, the photo of the night, man. The big old Usman punch. And, man, I'm just look at, look at how do you punch water out of somebody's head, man. All that sweat on the head was like, hang on, hang on. I was used to being on the face. And now the fist came, and now we're just suspended in the air right now. What do we do? Where's the face that our kind of molecules belong on? <laughs> Um, so that was UFC last night. Absolutely insane. Some great fights, some great highlights of these fights as well. And just, I mean, you know, it's UFC, man. I mean, that's what you count. That's what you come to see. That's what you pay to see. That's what you want to see. Some brutality, brutality. UFC, the ultimate fighter, baby. Come on. Who, who wants it? Let me get those punches in. Let me get those kicks in. Cause you're going to be breaking your, <laughs> going to be breaking your own leg out here. So man, oh man, what a great night in the UFC, man. Woof. Man, I, I still can't get over this picture alone. Man, oh, man. Great, great picture. Who who took this? Phil Ellsworth. Man, oh, man. That man got paid for this photo. I can guarantee you that. So, UFC last night, absolutely great. <clears throat> Alrighty, we're getting a little bit closer to the draft now, and I don't know. Everyone's still having Jamar Chase as the first wide receiver taken. I think that's a little bit of a mistake, man. We've got Devontae Smith. He's got to be the first wide receiver taken in this draft. He's my kind of front runner of kind of wide receivers in this draft. He's got to be the first one taken, in my opinion. I would definitely have him ranked first of the top five wide receivers, unlike PFF, who is having Jamar Chase, and I've seen and I have been seeing other other people take Jamar Chase number one but I mean what are we talking about at the end of the day I mean yeah Jamar Chase had one good season and it was real good season don't get me wrong it ended in a great championship game they won it he was I think he had like two touchdowns in that game we'll talk about it in a second but yeah he had one great season but I'm talking about Devontae Smith who's been at Alabama four straight years and got better every single year and played in 2020 and won the Heisman Jamar Chase you know opting out of the 2020 season which you know we've got no problem with absolutely take care of your own health you know that's your that should be priority number one I get it but at the end of the day I mean that's going to hurt your draft stock we haven't seen you in a year we've got Devontae Smith who won the Heisman in the same year that Jamar Chase did not play so at the end of the day man it's no disrespect to Jamar Chase for not picking him the first wide receiver it's just we've got proven talent four straight years capping off in a Heisman trophy performance so I really don't understand how you can put Jamar Chase above Devontae Smith. It just makes zero sense. They, they're they both great wide receivers. They both put up great number of stats. Devontae Smith is even a little bit taller at 6'1". Jamar Chase is only 6 foot. Um, everybody's making a big stink of uh, Devontae Smith's uh, weight at like 170. I think the last time we saw it was like 166. And, you know, Jamar Chase is a little bit beefier at the 208. But we still don't know if that was a fluke season or not. Because when we look at his stats, you know, 2018 freshman season. Season, just the 23 receptions for 313 yards. Devontae Smith had that season as well. Uh, rookie freshman season, eight receptions for 160 yards. And then Devontae Smith just kept getting better. His uh, sophomore year, 42 catches for 693 yards. Then he's the primary target starting his junior year. He takes full advantage, 68 catches for 1,256 yards, 14 touchdowns. Then 2020, this season, the season that Jamar Chase did not play in, he wins the Heisman at 117 receptions for 1,856 yards and 23 touchdowns and getting it done in the big game, the national championship game. I mean, we could start with, you know, Jamar Chase's, you know, 2019 season of why he was so great. I mean, he won the national championship against Clemson, nine catches for 221 yards, two touchdowns in that game. Folks, I completely agree that Jamar Chase had a fantastic year. That's not what I'm saying. All I'm saying is that Devontae Smith has done everything Jamar Chase has done. So I, I'm not understanding and more and more and more. That's what we're saying. Devontae Smith has done more than Jamar Chase has. So I'm not really understanding understanding why people are having Jamar Chase being the kind of clear-cut number one wide receiver in this year's draft. 
We see what Devontae Smith did for his Heisman uh, Trophy winning season here. He got to the National Championship game kind of like Jamar Chase did. He showed out in the National Championship game just like Jamar Chase did, but maybe even a little bit better because he, uh, against Ohio State this year for the championship, 12 catches for 215 yards and three touchdowns. We saw Jamar Chase only have two touchdowns in his National Championship game. So And, and he kind of not floundered, but wasn't a huge role, huge, huge piece in the kind Kind of playoff run uh, for Jamar Chase in 2019 because we look at the bowl or the uh, the Big Ten or not the Big Ten. Um, what is this against uh, Georgia? The SEC, um, the SEC championship game against Georgia. He only had three catches for 41 yards and a touchdown. Yeah, the touchdown, fantastic, but three catches, 41 yards. Is that a huge impact? Um, let's see. Uh, let's go into this Georgia game to see kind of how we stacked up against other LSU wide receivers. All right, so here we go in the national championship game twenty nine or in the SEC championship game of twenty nineteen. All right, the LSU's wide receivers, Jamar Chase. I mean, he was the worst one, the, the worst one. I mean, we had Terrence Marshall put up eighty nine yards and two touchdowns. We had Justin Jefferson, who I mean, who panned out in the league, absolutely fantastic, one hundred and fifteen yards and one touchdown. So yeah, Jamar Chase was great in that national championship game, but they didn't really use him up until that game they didn't really utilize him that much in the SEC championship game and then here we go the first round of the playoffs against Oklahoma in 2019 two catches for 61 yards no touchdowns let's see what everybody else did they put up 63 points without him scoring the ball at all and we got what do we got uh, Justin Jefferson 227 yards four touchdowns Justin Jefferson had four touchdowns in this game so you know Jamar Chase had a fantastic National Championship game against Clemson. Um, I think he was the one that put up the most yards. Let's uh, double check that here. Yeah, Justin Jefferson only had 106 yards and no touchdowns. So, yeah, Jamar Chase absolutely got it done in the biggest game. Fantastic. But Devontae Smith did the same thing, folks, and had a little bit of a better kind of run up and up into that national championship game. So, let's look at 2020's uh, Devontae Smith's kind of, you know, resume and lead up to that national championship game. So, we get... The SEC championship game against Florida, uh, Devontae Smith had 15 catches for 184 yards, two touchdowns. Let's see how he stacked up against the other wide receivers here of Alabama. Devontae Smith was the only one with two touchdowns. Then Najee Harris had two touchdowns, two rushing touchdowns. No other wide receivers caught uh, touchdown passes. Now, Najee Harris also had uh, three receiving touchdowns as well, which is kind of crazy. So fantastic to that, but as far as kind of wide receiver talent, Devontae Smith was the only one truly getting it done in the SEC championship game. Then we go to the first round of the playoffs against Notre Dame. Once again, he got it done. Seven catches for 130 yards and three touchdowns. Let's see how he stacked up against his own team, his own wide receivers here. So here we go. Uh, one other wide receiver, Jaleel Billingsley, had four catches for 39 yards and one touchdown. No other wide receiver had another touchdown. Najee Harris didn't even have a touchdown in this game. It was all Devontae Smith scoring the ball, getting it done by his lonesome out there in the first round of the playoffs. And then we get to the national championship game against Ohio State, and he's still continuing to get it done and be the primary factor of winning these games, these big games, the bowl game, the first round of the playoffs, and the national championship game. Not just Jamar Chase eh, eh, and um, SEC championship game. Eh, first round of the playoffs. Oh, real great final championship game. We got Devontae Smith running the gauntlet in these last three games of the season. So I, I, I truly just don't get it. I do not get it, man. Heisman winner, four years, getting better every single season, culminating into his senior season where he just went absolutely manic in the championship games, in the bowl games, in the um <clears throat> in the playoff games, you know. So I got to give it up for Devontae Smith at number one, being the number one wide receiver taken in this draft. I truly just do not get Jamar Chase. Yes, he's a fantastic talent, but he's a, he only did it for one season. We haven't seen him get better. We haven't seen him just recently. You know, he's two years removed now from action on the field. So it's just all these kind of, you know, decent. I mean, they're not big red flags. They're just tiny red flags. But with Devontae Smith, we get no red flags at all because we all the boxes are checked. He's a champion. He gets it done in the big games. He played all four seasons. 
seasons, got better every single season, won a Heisman, and was just a primary factor in every single big game that he played in. So I got to give it up to Devontae Smith being that first wide receiver taken. I truly just do not get it. I do not get how you can put Jamar Chase above Devontae Smith. I do not get it at all, folks. I truly don't. So that's where we're going to leave it come Thursday. We'll see, you know, who takes the wide receiver. It better be Miami at number six for Devontae Smith because I'm not playing this Jamar Chase game no more. Go get Devontae Smith. He's proven talent. He's proven it. Four straight years, getting better every year, folks. What more do y'all need to see from this man? He needs to be the first wide receiver taken, folks. <clears throat> Alrighty, let's move on here. A um, little quote here by Anthony Edwards. Anthony Edwards' reason why the Timberwolves have been playing better in the fourth in fourth in fourth quarters than they were earlier in the season. And he quote says, "I was on the bench back then, and I mean, man, oh man, we've been liking what we've been seeing from this Timberwolves team. We just bet them plus twelve yesterday against the Jazz. They went outright, bingo, bango, money, yes sir. And we love what Anthony Edwards is doing. Him and Carl Anthony Towns are getting it done." Uh, Ricky Rubio's being great, kind of facilitating the floor for the starters, and then D'Angelo Russell just getting it done off the bench. Absolutely magnificent. So we like this team. This is a different Timberwolves team than the start of the season um, at this end of the season now because everybody's healthy. Everybody's had kind of the year to get kind of, or Anthony Edwards has, has the year to get experience to, you know, he's still a rookie out here, folks. So... Uh, fantastic work by Anthony Edwards. Fantastic work by this Timberwolves team. And, folks, I cannot wait till next season on this Timberwolves team, man. Give them the credit. They truly deserve it. They're getting it done. Even though they have nothing to play for, we told you all that they've been eliminated from the playoffs. And uh, they're just keep on, you know, they're, ju they're just keep on playing. They're just going to play, and they're going to win games, and they're going to give it their all because they know they're playing for their future. And this is a pretty decent kind of squad here. D'Angelo Russell, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, shore up your kind of, you know, bench a little bit through the offseason, and this is going to be kind of a dangerous Timberwolves team. I would mark them at a playoff caliber team next year, absolutely. So, you know, Anthony Edwards, you know, um, I love it. I love this his kind of attitude. He's going to be Rookie of the Year because, unfortunately, LaMelo Ball got injured, but he's really kind of stepped it up. Ever since LaMelo Ball's got injured, this man has really stepped it up and, you know, has is kind of proving, hey, I actually deserve to win it. Not because, you know, LaMelo Ball, um, unfortunately, got injured, but, you know, the way I've been playing, I went out and earned it. It's not like I was second place and then LaMelo Ball got injured, so I just automatically, you know, is in the winner now of Rookie of the Year. He went out and earned it. He went out and played he's still balling out and I absolutely love everything about uh, Anthony Edwards this Timberwolves team so we'll see how they do next season unfortunately this one this season is not going to result in a play-in uh, tournament game or a playoff spot anything like that but uh, they do have a nice little future ahead of them if they all can stay healthy that is the main key <coughs> Alrighty, and then um, Calvin Johnson highlights have graced my timeline, so you know we got to watch it here on the show. So we get a nice little four-minute highlight package of Calvin Johnson doing what Calvin Johnson does, folks, mossing the heck out of everybody else. So let's watch this tape roll. Let's just kind of relive Calvin Johnson, Megatron days in Detroit here. Unfortunately, no, no, uh, no Super Bowl win, no Super Bowl appearance, no kind of... Uh, NFC Championship game, nothing like that, unfortunately, for Calvin Johnson, but just, I mean, a stud on the field, so here we go, Calvin Johnson, here we go, first play up, Matt Stafford, 30-yard bomb to the end zone, triple coverage, no big deal for Calvin Johnson, he's too big, folks, I, I want, let's get the official height, I want to say 6'5", let's just double check here very quickly. Almost certain 6'5", could possibly be 6'4". Let's see what we get. 6'5", <clears throat> there it is. All righty, yeah. So 6'5", Calvin Johnson in triple coverage. I mean, come on, 50-50 balls. Give him the chance. He's 6'5". No other corner here for the Cowboys with 6'5". here. So, yes, I'm taking my opportunity. Here we go. Matt Stafford in the red zone from the 20 against the Packers. Once again, double covered. No big deal. It's Calvin mother-loving Johnson. He's 6'5". Throw it up for me. Damn. This is what I love about quarterbacks in the league, man. If you're trusting your wide receivers, if you're trusting your weapons in the red zone, in the end zone, yes, sir. He's 6'5". Just throw it up. He will go and get it or just falls harmlessly incomplete. Here it is. One-on-one. -on -one. Abs. Oh, my God. This is fantastic. This is what I'm talking about right here. The one-on-one. -on -one, the 50-50 ball right on the goal line. Yes, sir. That's 6'5". This is a beautiful ball by Matt Stafford. Absolutely placing it perfectly on the money here. 
Let's get it back here against the Bucks. I mean, just true 50-50 ball placed exactly high and outside, and that's 6-5, baby. This is why you go and get tall wide receivers to do this in the end zone. That's why, you know, Tom Brady was having success this season because he had Mike Evans in the end zone and Rob Gronkowski. So you got the nice kind of 6-4 wide receiver of Mike Evans, but then you've also got, you know, the 6-4 beef of a tight end in Rob Gronkowski. So this is why Tom Brady was having so much success here in the red zone this season. Just got to get those big, tall weapons, man. We've got the draft coming up Thursday. Get a nice, tall, wide receiver. Go and get a Calvin Johnson, Calvin Johnson-esque type of prototype player so they can make these moves in the red zone. All right, but what, do they, what does he do not in the red zone? Can he still ball? Yes, sir. 30 yards on the field. Double cover. Calvin Johnson, folks. There he is. What other wide receiver in the league is doing this consistently right now? Maybe DeAndre Hopkins. He he high points the ball as good as Calvin Johnson. He's not 6'5". He's like 6'1". But, man, oh, man. Here we go. Kind of back in the red zone at the 22-yard line. Going into the end zone. Beautiful. Beautiful. Bingo, bango. Calvin Johnson going up and get it. 6'5". Falling away. Concentration. Eyes catch. Two feet downs. Everything. His whole body's in bounds. Fantastic. Man, oh man, look at him go. You think you can just, you think you can defend this man? I mean, you got to watch the speed and the route breaking. He can get it over the top. He can obviously, you know, catch it, you know, on a nice little curl route. But here we go. Oh, and then he's bringing out the stunt with the one-handed. Come on, you got to do better than that. You think you're fending me off with just the one-hand little, you know, bump? No, no, no. You're not pushing me more towards the sideline. You got all that room over there. Before he goes out of bounds, catches the ball one hand. Fantastic. Matt Stafford back at it. Yes, sir. Sideline catch once again. I mean, you can't push him. You can't push him. I mean, you're giving him an inch on the sideline. You think that's great coverage. He's, he's going to squeeze that toe in. He's going to tap his feet down so he does everything. He goes up and gets it. He gets two feet in bounds wherever he is on the field. And then the deep ball, 50-50 from 50 yards to the end zone. You try to push him to the sideline, he still gets in. You try to force him inside, and that's a bad idea because, I mean, just look at this great positioning that he had. And, man, oh, man, is this Brent Grimes that he's just absolutely abusing out there? That looks like Brent Grimes, unfortunately, uh, for the Dolphins. But, yeah, Calvin Johnson, I mean, just look at this inside positioning. I mean, man, oh, man, folks, how are you catching a ball against this? I mean, look at this defender. I'm, I'm I'm almost certain this is Brent Grimes. But either way, whatever defenders out there is just getting absolutely destroyed by Calvin Johnson. I mean, look at this. First of all, do these two receive, Do these two players even look close to the same stature? That's why you go and get a big, beefy 6'5", because these corners really aren't that beefy. They're just kind of, you know, fast. They're a little taller, maybe 6'2". But, I mean, folks, we're talking about beef at 6'5". And then the inside positioning, basically just like basketball out here, boxing out your opponent. Magnificent work I mean great and then he go comes down with the catch on top of everything else man oh man yeah Brent Grimes there he is I mean he was great but I mean it's Calvin Johnson I mean I'm taking Calvin Johnson over any other defensive back in the league I don't care all right, here we go again, again, this time a little underthrown ball. He has to go down to the ground and get it, and he will lay out his body. I mean, look at this catch radius that he has, you know, above him. If it's highly thrown, if it's poorly thrown to the left, underthrown to the left, he'll go out and catch it. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He knows, hey, I'm going to be anybody that I'm, uh, um, that I'm, oh, my God. Did you all see this play right here? Right, I mean, he's coming over the middle, knows he's going to take a big shot by that safety coming over, unfortunately. Or fortunately for Kelvin Johnson, the safety misses, so he doesn't take the big hit, but he was still gearing up for that big hit, still had the concentration to go up, kind of, you know, go up, jump, leave the feet, you know, be exposed to the big hit, and he still has the wherewithal, the concentration to catch the ball for the touchdown. All right, here we go, 30 seconds left in the highlight package, Matt Stafford going deep, 50 yards, triple coverage, Hail Mary, touchdown, Kelvin Johnson again, Triple coverage. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. He's 6'5". Look at him. Go up and get the ball. Once again, the concentration after kind of the initial touch of the ball. Look at this. So he touches the ball. 
Then it kind of gets popped out a little bit. He re reaffirms kind of possession in his own hands. Coming down. This guy's on his neck. This guy's above him. This guy's in front of him as well. Trying to break it up. And he still has the strength to hold on. Being brought down to the ground for the touchdown. And watch this one again, folks. From the back angle. The back end. Just go up and get the ball. Draft. Tall, wide receivers. This is why you do it right there. It's Calvin Johnson, 6'5". He can beat anybody on the 50-50 ball. Single coverage, double coverage, triple coverage, quadruple coverage, quadruple coverage. You can't even stop this man either. So, Calvin Johnson, what a freaking beast. What a legend. Unfortunately, no ring. Um, that's the only knock on the man. But everything else was absolutely fantastic. Calvin Johnson, what a freaking stud, truly. Alrighty, those were all the stories that we needed to cover for today, so let's head over to the NBA. We'll break down the games from last night, do our moneymaker for tonight's action, and then head over to the NFL draft prospect of the day, looking at Shakur Brown, cornerback from Michigan State, seeing what that man's all about. <clears throat> So let's just jump right into it here today. We're also going to try and wrap this up by 1 o'clock because, once again, just like yesterday, we've got a 1 o'clock NBA game tonight, today, folks. So we'll try to get our moneymaker in time for that. We got it in time yesterday for the Knicks. Raptors game, we chose Knicks plus 1. They win by 17. Fantastic. So let's start here with the Knicks-Raptors game from last night. One of our moneymaker picks, as we just said. Knicks plus one, and they take care of business because of the usual suspects, folks. Um, R.J. Barrett, 25 points, 12 rebounds, 4 assists. Fantastic. Julius Randle, 31 points, 10 rebounds. And then Reggie Bullock, man, he's really been stepping it up here over this kind of, what are we at, eight-game win streak now for the, for the Knicks. Let's refresh this. For the Knicks, we got nine, oh my god, nine game winning streak now. So, I mean, yeah, Reggie Bullock, he's been clutched during this nine game winning streak. He's been putting up the points. We get 16 points on 60% shooting, three rebounds, two assists to go along with that. And then the bench, man, the bench is a huge piece of this Knicks team. Derrick Rose has been getting it done these last kind of four or five games, putting up 19 points, seven assists, four rebounds. He shot 70%, absolutely magnificent. We still get Taj Gibson out there, nine points, five rebounds. Bounds. Emmanuel quickly, only six points. You know, he only took five shots though. So, but we do need him to kind of be a huge bench piece as well. We need to be able to rely on him for a 10 plus uh, point night any given night. And then Obi Toppin put up nine points in eight minutes off the bench. Fantastic work. So we've got, they've got the players, they've got the starters, they've got the bench. They all just need to be on, and they've kind of all been on for these last nine games here. So absolutely magnificent work for this Knicks team. Now are still at the kind of four seed, trying to extend their lead over the Hawks because I mean we're talking four or five seed here, talking about playoff positioning, home court advantage going to come in absolutely crucial here for this Knicks team who hasn't. I mean, when was the last time they've ever been kind of this good this late in the season? And so definitely the Knicks are going to want that kind of home court advantage, at least for the first round of the playoffs. They'll worry about the second round if they can kind of beat the first round. But they definitely want that home court advantage here, and they're doing everything in their power to do that. Nine-game winning streak, absolutely magnificent. <clears throat> All right, now let's go to the Raptors now. Fred Van Vlieten, Kyle Lowry, and Pascal Siakam in, and they still can't get the win, so not the greatest here. Fred Van Vliet, 27 points, 11 assists, 5 rebounds, 5 of 10 from 3. Pretty great night, but Kyle Lowry is floundering here. 4 points, 9 assists, 7 rebounds. That's all great, but 4 points on 10% shooting, 0 of 8 from 3. Yikes, yikes. Truly let him down a little bit. Ken Birch still at the 5 here. They're newly acquired. Kind of big, 8.7 rebounds on 80% shooting on 5 shots. Siakam putting up 26 points, 5 assists, 7 rebounds on 5 of 9 from 3. And OG Ananubi still in the starting lineup, 27 points, 3 assists, 2 steals, 5 rebounds, 6 of 11 from 3. So kind of, uh, you know, decent night here by the starters. Just kind of Kyle, Kyle Lowry letting them down a little bit with the only 4 points. And then nothing great off the bench. I mean, Gary Trent Jr. not doing that great off the bench here. He was great in the starting lineup when he was there. But now that he's coming off the bench, it's just really nothing great. Four points on 25% uh, shooting on eight shots, 0 4 from three. So just couldn't get it done. And then, you know, you, we've heard of, you know, Utah Watanabe a little bit, but lackluster game here, only three points. And then Malachi Flynn, who's once again kind of been, you know, decent here for this Raptors team, barely playing at the only five minutes. So Raptors, another loss here. A little upset with how Nick Nurse is kind of running this team and, you know, just kind of, you know, 
crashing it into the ground, burning this team. So a little unfortunate here. Wanted to see what Nick Nurse can kind of do on kind of the last leg of kind of this Raptors team of Fred Van Vliet, Kyle Lowry, Pascal Siakam. I mean, something's going to give at the end of this year going into the offseason. They're going to have to get their superstar. They, I mean, we've seen it. I mean, we've seen it over the last two years. This Raptors team with Nick Nurse cannot win a championship. They can't really make it deep in the playoffs either. So they do need to go out and get that superstar uh, this offseason. We'll see what they do. But, uh, yeah, man, this Raptors team not ending their kind of decent run over this last kind of three, four years where they won the ring and then we're still competitive. And now, you know, we're at the end of it now. They're not even in the playing tournament at number 12 in the East. So not great here by the Raptors, but very well done by the Knicks last night. Alrighty, let's go to the 76ers and the Bucks now. Alrighty, so uh, Joel Embiid is still uh, did not play this game. Ben Simmons also did not play this game either. So I mean, there's really no reason why the 76ers team would win or be competitive. Uh, so let's start here with this Bucks team. An absolute blowout, 132-94 win over the 76ers. All right, Jan is 24 points, 14 rebounds, seven assists. Chris Middleton, four points on 0 of 6 shooting. Luckily, they didn't need him last night, but Chris Middleton not stepping up here late in the season. Little red flag is starting to kind of appear for this Bucks team, but luckily, Chris, like we said, I mean, they didn't need him because it was just an absolute blowout anyway. Um, all right, Brooke Lopez, five points, two rebounds. Dante DiVincenzo, 11 points, four rebounds, three of five from three. Drew Holiday, 12 points, four steals, five assists, three rebounds. So, I mean, the 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 76ers were just so lackluster that really all the bench were having great minutes and having great production out here. We get Pat Connaughton, 11 points, six rebounds. Brian Forbes, 13 points. P.J. Tucker just getting it done on the defensive end, you know, three points, plus 10 in the plus minus classic. Bobby Portis with the 17 points, eight rebounds. What else we get here? Jeff Teague, or no, Jordan Nora, 13 points, 3 rebounds. So just absolutely huge scoring here by the bench of the Bucks, just because they were up so much um, anyway. So, I mean, you're not going to play your starters when it's a blowout. So that's basically how the game went. Let's talk about this 76ers team now. So this was their starting lineup. George Hill at the 1, Seth Curry at the 2, Danny Green at the 3, Tobias Harris at the 4, and Mike Scott at the 5. And nobody stepped up here in the starting roster. Truly a big letdown here. Seth Curry was the leading scorer for the starters with 13 points. That's not going to get it done. So let's talk about it here. George Hill, 6 points, 1 assist, 1 rebound. He definitely cannot start. He's great off the bench, don't get us wrong. But, you know, come being a starter, he's not a starter anymore folks Seth Curry 13 points 3 rebounds 2 of 5 from 3 not terrible overall Mike Scott at the 5 3 points 2 assists 2 rebounds nothing close to what Joel Embiid does for this team Tobias Harris being kind of a little bit of a letdown here usually we need to he needs to be kind of the primary scorer when everybody else is kind of injured so Tobias Harris a little bit of a letdown here 9 points 9 rebounds that's good but uh, 1 of 3 from 3 40% on 10 shots just needed to be the score here had to go for 30 plus points he had to and he didn't now we're nowhere even close <clears throat> and that same thing with Danny Green I mean he only took five shots but five points two assists four rebounds one of five from three he needed to be either the he also kind of could have been the score either it needed to be Danny Green Tobias Harris or Seth Curry honestly all three of them together to score all those points and they didn't put up anything they barely put up like 30 points combined between the three of them so nothing truly great here by this kind of 76ers B squad without Joel Embiid they truly flounder off the bench, Dwight Howard playing 24 minutes, 12 points, 12 rebounds. Can always count on him. Shake Milton off the bench, 15 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds. Can also count on him off the bench. Uh, Tyrese Maxey also had a great game, 15 points um, off the bench. He didn't shoot. He wasn't efficient, uh, 38% on 13 shots, but I'll give him the 15 points off the bench, outscoring all the starters, so I've got no problem with that. But the starters of the 76ers team, we usually couldn't count on Tobias Harris. He couldn't get it done, and Danny Green doesn't get it done either. So, uh, uh, lackluster scoring output by the 76ers, only putting up 94 points. Of course they lose. Of course they do. Alrighty, here we go. The Pelicans and the Spurs. And man, oh man, this was a huge game because we were talking about playoff positioning here. We were talking about the Spurs at the 10th seed going into this game and the Pelicans at the 11th seed going into this game. And the winner 
Would it, I mean, the Pelicans could have tried to make a dent. I mean, they're four games out from the playing tournament. There is no more losing for this Pelicans team. But what did they do last night? They lost to the Spurs. So, well done to the Spurs. Congratulations. But what is going on with this Pelicans team? Lonzo Ball had a pretty good game, putting up 24 points. But they still couldn't get it done. Just lackluster kind of offense if it's not Brandon Ingram and Zion Williams. And nobody else can score this ball. Definitely missing Josh Hart tremendously off that bench. And just nobody else can kind of pick up the slack consistently scoring wise so a huge huge crushing loss to this Pelicans team now I mean I don't even know man I don't even think this team can get into the playing tournament now the Warriors at the 10th seed the Spurs at the 9th seed the Grizzlies at the 8th the Blazers at the 7th I mean we're talking about you know, at minimum, at minimum to get that number 10 seed away from the Warriors. We're talking about four game difference between the Pelicans and the Warriors. And, you know, the Warriors are good. They step up to the occasion. This Pelicans team never rises to the occasion. So, I mean, man, oh man, truly unfortunate here by this or by this Pelicans team losing this game. A uh, game they could not lose and they went and lost it. I can't believe it. No urgency over there with the Pelicans. I hate it. <clears throat> Uh, Lonzo Ball had the last chance at the shot there to kind of uh, tie up the game. We can go play by play here. Let's go to the fourth quarter. DeMar DeRozan hits kind of the nice mid-range jumper with about 30 seconds left to bring him up by three. And then Lonzo Ball, he he he's the one taking kind of, you know, the last second three. And I don't really like it. So let's talk about this shot and then we'll go into the stats a little bit deeper here. But, I mean, we're talking 34 seconds left. Spurs up 108, 105. Um, early offense here pushing the ball. And Lonzo just, he just takes a three. Now it's decently wide open. He just misses, unfortunately. Just misses, unfortunately. And then it's over. It's the fouling game from there on out. And it's just game over. So, Oh, man, Lonzo Ball just couldn't be clutch. I mean, he's not a huge reason why they win these games either or anyway. I've been hearing and seeing that, you know, Lonzo Ball is one of the best three-point shooters in the league statistically. But, I mean, it's never in the clutch. It's never against good teams when it matters and it doesn't result in wins. So, I don't care about it, man. Truly unfortunate. But, um, yeah, Pelicans lose by 2, 110, 108. Let's start here with the Spurs. DeMar DeRozan had a great game, 32 points, 8 assists, 7 rebounds. Was clutch when he needed to be. Derek White, 22 points, 2 assists, 2 steals, 5 rebounds. DeJounte Murray, 11 points, 7 rebounds, 5 assists, 3 steals. Jacob Poto still at the 5, 8 points, 3 assists, 7 rebounds. And then Keldon Johnson rounded out the starters, 14 points, 9 rebounds, 2 assists. So everybody just being a huge kind of productive piece out there in the starting lineup, whether it's points or rebounds or assists, they're all getting it done in multiple ways out there. Something that the Pelicans don't do. I mean, you can rely on Brandon Ingram and Zion Williamson, but besides Besides that, you're getting no real great production offensively in that starting lineup. Um, nothing great off the bench here, which is to be expected here of this Spurs team. We get Drew Eubanks with the leading score off the bench, 8 points, 4 rebounds. Just nothing great off the bench. Patty Mills playing 20 points off the bench, only putting up 5 points. It's just the, the starters of the Spurs got it done where the Pelicans just couldn't be clutch at the end. So let's go to the Pelicans now. Lonzo Ball, I mean, pretty good game. 24 points, 4 assists, 2 rebounds, 6 of 10 from 3. So good, but not when it mattered, man. Just can't be that clutch winner. Truly, man, truly unfortunate here for Lonzo Ball last night. Eric Bledsoe still kind of being trash overall. 6 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds, 3 steals. That's pretty decent. But just not being that offensive producer. We need other offense here. And if Eric Bledsoe's not doing it, uh, uh, he's a good defender. He's a decent defender, but we need points as well. You can't just be a one-trick pony in this league, folks. It's, it does not work out. Uh, Steven Adams, 4 points, 10 rebounds. Zion Williamson, 33 points, 14 rebounds, 56% from the field. He's easy money out here, folks. You can always expect 30-plus points on efficient as heck shooting from that man. Uh, Brandon Ingram, 24 points, 6 assists, 6 rebounds. He hit 1 of 5 from 3, not the greatest, 42% overall from the field. But, I mean, he's their, main, he's their second main scorer, and he put up 24 points, so you got to give it up for him a little bit. And then nothing great from the bench. I mean, like we said, no Josh Hart. I mean, that's a huge offensive production piece off the bench. We get Jackson Hayes, who's playing great, but only 13 minutes out here. Six points, four rebounds on 28% shooting on 20, on seven shots. Could have been a little bit more efficient out there. Uh, but then that's, I mean, that's really it. We get uh, Najee Marshall, six points, six rebounds on 40% shooting. 
So just unfortunate <clears throat> Pelicans couldn't be clutch. And I don't know if I'm trusting Lonzo Ball out there last second shot. I mean, I think I give it to Brandon Ingram, maybe Zion Williamson. I know you need a three, so probably can't go to Zion there. But I don't know. Is Lonzo your best clutchest shooter out there? If it is, ooh, they're not winning games, so obviously he's not that great at it. So, <clears throat> unfortunate, man. Truly, man. And I don't know what's what it, what's it going to take for this Pelicans team to wake up. I mean, you can't even beat the Spurs. Come on. I mean, they're not even that great of a team. They're truly hit and miss. I mean, this Pelicans team isn't anything great either. I mean, we, we see them floundering all season. But a uh, game that they should have won, and they didn't. They didn't take advantage. It's just unfortunate. It's just truly unfortunate. Another season, another year where we're not getting Zion in the playoffs because of not no clutchability on this team. All righty, let's move on to the next game up. Bulls Heat. This was one of our moneymaker picks as well. Bulls plus four and a half, and they lose by five. Classic loss there. So still kind of right thinking, unfortunately, just kind of lose by the half a point there. Um, all right, so let's start here with the Heat. Good win by the Heat. Definitely, truly needed win here for this Heat team. Where are they at in the power rank or in the uh, standings now? Still number seven in the East. So, uh, you know, they can they can move up a little bit. They do have a you know a potential to kind of move up into that four seed. I mean, they're only two games out from being four. So two games kind of separate four to seven. Four games separate eight from four. So there is a little bit of wiggle room for this Heat team to get a little better playoff positioning here. Because if the season ended today, we'll just say, you know, they get the seventh seed for the playing tournament, whatever it is. Uh, you know, they would have to go and face the 76ers round one. And I don't think they want to do that. A healthy Joel Embiid is almost unstoppable to stop. So, uh, you know, if they can kind of move up to, to that kind of four seed, you know, either playing, you know, the Knicks or the Hawks or something. A little bit more their speed, at least for the first round. Let them get their rhythm under them in the playoffs and see what they can do. But, yeah, definitely got to kind of get on their win horse a little bit here. But they did it last night, so fantastic. All the starters kind of got it done as well. So let's start here with the Heat. Jimmy Butler, 20 points, 8 assists, 5 rebounds. Bam Adebayo, 20 points, 10 assists, 6 rebounds. Trevor Reza, a little lackluster scoring the ball, but, you know, good defender out there, plus 13 in this uh, kind of 5-point win. Uh, four points, four rebounds on 28% shooting, 04 from three. So didn't get it done offensively, but got it done defensively, and everybody else got it done offensively. So, you know, kind of squeezed out there for Trevor Reza. <clears throat> Duncan Robinson had a magnificent game, 23 points on 7 of 15 from 3, and uh, five, uh, 6 rebounds to go along with that, fantastic, he was a plus 16 also on the floor, the highest in the uh, on the team, and then Kendrick Nunn also getting it done, 22 points, 2 assists, 5 rebounds, 4 of 8 from 3, getting it done, nothing great from the bench, we get uh, no Tyler Hero playing out there, so unfortunate there. No Goran Dragic either, and they're still able to get the win. So huge, huge, huge by their starters last night to get the win. Fantastic work. Now let's talk about this Bulls team. Still no Zach Levine. Garrett Temple filling in. Kobe White filling in in the starting lineup for them. Kobe White had a fantastic game. Kept it close. 31 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds. He shot 61% from the field and 3 of 9 from 3. Garrett Temple at the two, two points on 14% shooting. Truly kind of let him down here. Uh, four assists to go along with that. Vucevic, 26 points, six assists, 14 rebounds. Looking like the old Vuce in those Magic games this season. Daniel Tice still in the starting lineup. Nine points, six rebounds. He got dunked on. He got a poster of Bam Adebayo on him. And then Patrick Williams to round out the starters. Four points, four rebounds. It's just nothing great. Nothing consistent besides Vucevic and Kobe White. Nobody else doing anything great out here. Laurie Marcannon, nine points, five rebounds. Thaddeus Young, six points, four assists, two rebounds. A little lackluster on what he does. Um, so just truly unfortunate. Once again, by this Bulls team, they did keep it close. They were kind of getting blown out in this game. Brought it back. Kept it close five point loss but this Bulls team they need another score Zach Levine being out is truly hurting this team they're currently the 11th seed here in the east and uh the Wizards looking like they're gonna claim that number 10 seed and hey I'll give it up for the Wizards they're going out and earning their kind of seeding in the kind of playing tournament by just winning games where this Bulls team they can't even win consistently I get Zach Levine's out but at the end of the day we need a we need next man up mentality I mean uh, somebody's got to step up Kobe White had a great game here but we need somebody else you need at least three good scores on a team if you want to have a chance to win games the Bulls just only have two here so Truly unfortunate by this Bulls team. I would put Laurie Marcannon back in the kind of starting lineup somewhere, maybe at the three, but you got to get another scorer in there. 
So good win by the Heat, bad loss by the Bulls. A little disappointing loss by the Bulls, not too lead bad, uh, not having Zach Levine. <clears throat> Alrighty, next game up, Mavericks and the Lakers, and the Mavericks get it done. Um, no Montrose Harrell for the Lakers, no um, um, no LeBron still, obviously. They couldn't make it work. Anthony Davis still playing 28 minutes, so not too much on minutes restrictions anymore playing the 28 minutes, but still couldn't get it done. Let's talk about this Mavericks team first since they won. Luka Doncic, only 18 points, only 18 points on 40% shooting, but uh, he had 13 assists, 8 rebounds. Tim Hardaway Jr. in the starting lineup. Look at this man go. Didn't elevate his play. Actually kind of floundered a little bit here. He's been getting it done off the bench. We've been calling him a potential sixth man of the year candidate. He gets into the starting lineup because, uh, who was it, uh, Josh? Um, uh, who was it? Uh, I forget it. It's um, I forgot who was not in. Josh, Josh something. Josh Hardson, Hutchinson. Something like that. But either way, Tim Hardaway Jr. getting into the starting lineup at the two. Eight points on 15% shooting. One of seven from three. Yikes, yikes. But luckily, they squeezed out a win. Uh, Dwight Powell at the five. No Chris Porzingis for this uh, Mavericks team. They still win. So Dwight Powell at the five. 25 points, nine rebounds. A huge step up. I mean, basically taking over of what um, uh, Chris Porzingis does on a nightly basis. So absolutely fantastic there. Maxi Kleber back in the starting lineup at the four. Nine points, five assists, ten rebounds. And then Dorian Finney-Smith, 21.7 rebounds, two assists. So an overall pretty decent night from this starting uh, starting lineup. Um, off the bench, nothing great. J.J. Redick, 8 points on 2 of 2 from 3, so just kind of doing what they're bringing him in to do, scoring the 3 at a high percentage. Willie Colney stein 8 points as well off the bench, but a minus 8 in the game, not the greatest. So uh, Mavericks are able to kind of squeeze out another win here. And now, I mean, this is a little... Uh, a little uh, uh, inexcusable loss here for the Lakers. No Chris at Porzingis. I mean, you got to start winning a little bit more games here. So let's see who kind of floundered here for this Lakers team. Dennis Schroeder, 16 points, 10 assists. He shot two of eight from three, so not the greatest there. 38% overall from the field. Ben McLemore, he's been absolutely a stud here back in the starting, or I think this may be his first game in the starting lineup, but 20 points, led the team in scoring six of 10 from three. This is going to be huge for this Lakers team when everybody's healthy. When LeBron James is back healthy, Ben McLemore is going to be the key for this Lakers team to kind of repeat as champions, honestly. He needs to be this consistent shooter, and he proved it last night. Let's see if he can keep it up, but an absolutely wonderful game by Ben McLemore last night. Um, Andre Drummond still at the 5, 6 points, 12 rebounds. Anthony Davis, 17 points, 3 assists, 3 rebounds. He shot 0 of 6 from 3, so he definitely needs to get back into a little bit of a rhythm here. And then Kyle Kuzma still at the 3, 14 points, 0 assists, 2 rebounds, 4 of 9 from 3. Just a decent performance out there. And then nothing great off this bench. I mean, usually we can count on Montrez Harrell, but he didn't play. Alex Caruso, 7 points. Taylor Horton Tucker, 6 points. I mean, they only took 7 shots collectively, but, I mean, we need scoring to come from somewhere. Markeith Morris on the bench now. Didn't have a good game. 4 points, 0 of 6 shooting, 18% from the field on 11 shots. So, Markeith Morris, ooh, I don't know if he can play off the bench man uh we'll see if he still plays off the bench but um did not have a good night here did not have a good night at all so uh unfortunate loss by this lakers team where are they in the standings right now still number five in the west game and a half in front of the mavericks at number six so we'll see what happens to this kind of Lakers team. It's going to be hard for them to move up. I mean, they're four games out from passing the Nuggets at the fourth seed and a game and a half back from falling out of kind of the top five here. So we'll see how they end it. Definitely trying to want to be in the kind of the the number five seed here. I don't think they can move up to the number four, but I mean, if they move to the sixth, they're going to have to face the Clippers first round. If they drop down to the seventh, they're going to have to face the Suns first round. If they drop down to the eighth, which I hopefully does not happen, but maybe it could be good for them because the Jazz are at number one, and I don't like the Jazz, man. I think the Jazz are not that great. They just lost last night to the Timberwolves. Not great. I mean, Donovan Mitchell was kind of their one superstar on that team besides him. Can we call Rudy Gobert a superstar? Jordan Clarkson, I mean, he's a bench player. Can we call him a superstar? Joe Ingles, is he a superstar? Um, uh, man, uh, their other point guard that's filling in that just made the All-Star game, blanking on his name, uh, Connolly. What's his first name? Is he a superstar? Mike Connolly, is he a superstar? 
I don't know, man. So I'm, I'm fearing this. Uh, well, I'm not fearing it. I'm, uh, I'm, I'm nervous for this Jazz team going into the playoffs, honestly. But uh, Lakers get the big old loss last night, 108-93. Alrighty, then we go to the Timberwolves and the Jazz now. This was one of our moneymaker picks now. Do not be sleeping on this uh, Timberwolves team. Vegas is has been disrespecting this team the entire season and definitely now at the back half of the season. But uh, we got the Timberwolves plus 12 points last night, and they win outright. Absolutely fantastic. They win 101-96 over the Jazz. Another reason why I'm nervous for this Jazz team going into the playoffs, man. They desperately need Donovan Mitchell. Don't know if he's going to be back uh, for the rest of the season. We'll see. But, yeah, absolutely huge loss for him. Definitely need him in there. But let's start here with the Timberwolves. Let's talk about our main guys. Ricky Rubio still in the starting lineup. Two points, two assists on one of five shooting. So not the greatest there. And D'Angelo Russell off the bench played more minutes than him. So are we finally going to see the switch now? We've been talking about it for like the last five games now. Are we going to see D'Angelo Russell back in the starting lineup in place of Ricky Rubio? But uh, Anthony Edwards gets it done, 23 points, 5 steals, 4 assists, 9 rebounds, 4 of 10 from 3. We, we will take that all day. Carl Anthony Towns, 24 points, 12 rebounds, 3 assists. Yes, sir. J.D. McDaniels, 6 points, 5 rebounds. And Josh Okuji, 8 points, 2 assists, 2 steals, 2 rebounds, 2 round out the starters. And then we go to D'Angelo Russell off the bench, 23 points, 3 rebounds, 1 assist, 2 steals, 3 of 10 from 3, 44% overall from the field, but those 23 points, we love it. And that's really it. Nobody else, no other score in double-digit figures. Everybody just kind of doing decent production out there. But the main three, Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell, they've proven that they can all get it done. Now we just need to see if D'Angelo Russell can kind of flow in with these guys in the starting rotation. That's kind of another step we need to see before the season ends, truly, for this Timberwolves team to see how they have to kind of progress in this offseason because I want to see this Timberwolves team flourish, folks. They've got some nice talent here. Carl Anthony Towns, Anthony Edwards, D'Angelo Russell. Yes, sir. Alrighty, now let's go to the Jazz now. Mike Connolly, Joe Ingles, Bohan Bogdanovich, Royce O'Neal, Rudy Gobert. Their classic kind of, you know, lineup now that Donovan Mitchell's not in anymore. So Mike Connolly, 18 points, 7 assists, 4 steals, 2 rebounds, 3 of 9 from 3, 33% of raw from the field. Joe Ingles, really lackluster game, 3 points on 11% shooting, 1 of 6 from 3. I mean, usually we don't see that from him. So a uh, really bad game from Joe Ingles last night. Rudy Gobert, 9 points. The lackluster offensively, 17 rebounds, though. Royce O'Neal, 8.7 rebounds. And then Bogdan Bo or Bohan Bogdanovich gets it done as well. 30 points. Led the team in scoring. Was the only one that was really doing anything great out here. 7 of 13 from 3. He was the only one that really was able to kind of keep it close for this team. Unfortunately, nobody else really got the memo. And then off the bench, I mean, Jordan Clarkson doing his thing, 15 points, 5 assists, 5 rebounds, 3 of 10 from 3, classic Jordan Clarkson game, just not able to get it done here, and um, I don't know, I don't know, I don't think this Jazz team is that deep anymore, unfortunately, um, uh, yeah, coming into this playoffs, man, ugh, ugh, this Jazz team, I think they're going to flounder, man, I truly think they're going to flounder, what do they got, if the season ended right now, they've got the Jazz kind of in the first round of the playoffs, we're just kind of not playing out the playing tournament at the eighth seed, whatever it is, so the Grizzlies at number eight there, and uh, the Grizzlies against the Jazz, man, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to say maybe the Grizzlies keep it close. It would probably it definitely goes at least five, six games, six games at least, and we'll see what happens. But I'm nervous for this Jazz team. They're not that good, man. They're truly not that good. We just dropped them down in our power rankings to uh, number three. Is that right? Ugh. But um, they're gonna be they're gonna be worse. <laughs> they're gonna be worse next Friday when we update it. But man, oh man, I'm nervous for this Jazz team. Nervous, nervous. All right, the last game of the night, the Nuggets and the Rockets, and this is what you're supposed to be doing, winning games, Jazz. Without your point guard, you can still win games because you still have other good pieces. The Jazz didn't have that memo. The Nuggets do have that memo, though, and they are flourishing. So let's start here with the Nuggets. Michael Porter Jr., 39 points on 8 of 12 from 3. What a phenomenal performance by Michael Porter Jr. He's been great this entire season in the starting lineup, don't get me wrong, but this game, holy moly, truly gets it done. And this is what Michael Porter Jr. wants, man, a heavier offensive role. And without Jamal Murray, he's got it because he's kind of the second best scorer on this team now. Joe Kick number one, Michael Porter Jr. number two, Aaron Gordon number three. So Michael Porter Jr. got his wish and he got his wish and he's stepping it up every single game. I love it, man. 
Um, Joe Cake, 24 points, 12 assists, 8 rebounds. Aaron Gordon, only 7 points. Once again, not taking a lot of shots out here. 7 shots still. Just kind of being, you know, the beef of the number 4. So I can respect it. Uh, PJ Dozier. Oh, my God. What an absolute great performance as well. All these players stepping up, and I love it, man. Michael Porter Jr. is going above and beyond. PJ Dozier, 23 points, 3 assists, 7 rebounds, 3 of 5 from 3, 76% overall. Facundo Capazzo still at the starting point guard position. 5 points, but he's being the facilitator out there with the 13 assists. That's all we're asking Facundo Capazzo to do to be the game manager. Alrighty, off the bench, Austin Rivers still getting solid production out here. Nine points, three assists, two rebounds, 29 minutes off the bench, two of six from three, plus five in the plus minus off the bench. So Austin Rivers now kind of competing. We know he's on the 10-day contract. I think they're going to sign him here uh, to kind of be full kind of contract for the rest of the season. So expect that. And then Jermichael Green off the bench, 10 points, three rebounds. Very well done. Uh, it was such a blowout that Bobo even made an appearance for three minutes, two points. Yes, sir. Get it done. Paul Millsap didn't even play, man. Paul Millsap did not even play, and they're still able to get the win. So, And I know it's against the Rockets. I get it, and they didn't even have basically anybody. Daniel House Jr., Avery Bradley, John Wall, Christian Wood all didn't play. I get all of that, but hey, we're not going to penalize you for doing what you're supposed to do. I mean, the Jazz faced the Timberwolves last night and couldn't get it done. You know what I mean? And I, the, Jazz, the Timberwolves are better than the Rockets, but I mean, come on. You're the Jazz. You're the best team in the West. You're the number one team. You shouldn't be losing to the worst team in the West. You know what I mean? So fantastic work to the Nuggets last night. Let's quickly go over the Rockets. I mean, Kelly Olenek is like the only one still, you know, consistent out here playing-wise. So Kelly Olenek at the 5 now, 21 points, 11 assists, 8 rebounds. Awful defense, a minus 30 on the floor. And I know, it was, was it a blowout loss? What was it? How many points? 13 points. So yeah, the minus, oof, minus 30 is really not good. Um, anybody step up here? Uh, what do we get? Uh, DJ Wilson at the four, 25 points, eight rebounds. I'll take that. Kenyon Martin Jr. at the three, 18 points. Armani Brooks at the two, 12 points. Jashawn Tate, 14 points. Off the bench, Anthony Lamb, 21 points. So absolutely. I mean, folks, they only had seven players playing. Wow. That was actually a good game by this Rockets team. Unfortunately, I mean, it's just Michael Porter Jr. going absolutely beast mode. So well done by the Rockets. I'll, I'll give I'll give it up for this Rockets team. Next man up mentality. I mean, like times three now, like truly of everything that this Rockets team has been through, and uh, pretty good game here by everybody. So just unfortunately ran into a little bit more firepower from this Nuggets team, but I'll give it up for that Rockets team. Decent performance last night, truly. Alrighty, that was all the NBA from last night. Let's kind of, uh, we are five minutes away from the tip-off, so hopefully we can kind of squeeze this game in before it officially tips off so we can count it on our moneymaker. But uh, this is what we have on deck for today, folks. We got 1 o'clock action, tipping off in five minutes. Celtics, Hornets, ESPN, going to be a good one. Then we get the Suns and the Nets, uh, 3.30 ESPN. That's going to be a great one as well. Grizzlies, Blazers at 4 o'clock. Uh, Cavs, Wizards, Bucks, Hawks, Pacers, Magic, and Kings, Warriors. All righty. We went 2-2 two and two, um, officially last night, but 3-1 uh, unofficially. I'm counting the Bulls plus 4.5 in a, a five-point loss as they win. Uh, so let's uh, refresh these lines here. Let's get them up to date and start talking about these games. So here we go. Celtics, Hornets, we're going to talk about it and we're going to act like we can get it in because it hasn't tipped off yet. So fantastic. So here we go. Celtics minus eight, Hornets, my, or Hornets plus eight. Out for the Celtics is just Robert Williams. So they got everybody. Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Evan Fournier off the bench. Love it. And then for the Hornets, just the usual suspects, Lamelo, Malik Bunk, and Gordon Hayward out. So I think we're going to stay away from this one. I do like the Celtics here, obviously straight up, but this Hornets team has kind of proven that they can kind of hang around. Um, they just won the game against the Cavs the other night. Fantastic. Uh, their loss against the Bulls was kind of a blowout. What are we talking? 9 plus 8, 17-point loss there. 12-point uh, loss against the Knicks. They do keep it relatively close. Just can't kind of close out games or just has like a poor shooting quarter at one point. So I'm um, going to stay away from this one. Let's see how, you know, actually, we're going to take the Celtics minus 8 here. Evan Fournier, I mean, they're, they're going to be good. I mean, they're going to have shooters off the bench, which is, which is exactly what they need. What do we say? Robert uh, Williams is out. Is that what we said? Or a game time decision? Um, Robert Williams is out. So they're not going to have the biggest uh, deep bench. They're going to have to rely on Tristan Thompson a lot. But they just need the scoring. Having Jalen Brown back. Having kind of Evan Fournier back. Let's rock with the minus eight here for the Celtics. 
nationally televised games. Let's bet on it. Celtics get it done. Uh, trying to move up in the power or in the standings a little bit here. A win here, you know, kind of puts some tide here with the Hawks. So we'll see how that goes for the number fifth seed. Definitely nobody wants to be six, seven, eight. Yeah, six, seven, eight here in the East. You do not want to face the Nets, the 76ers, or the Bucks first round. I mean, let's get the first round and then in the second round, you know, when they're a little bit more fatigued, maybe we can make our run. But you don't you do not want to face these high offensive power teams of the Nets, 76ers, and the Bucks. In the first round, you do, do not want to get that. So you would definitely want to be in the top. You you just want to be four or five seed here in the East. That's really all you can do at this point. I mean, uh, we're talking about um, the Knicks are like four games back from that third seed. The Hawks are five games back from that third seed. The Celtics are six games back from the five, from the third seed. So it's not realistic that they can get it, but it is realistic that they can kind of move up to that fourth or fifth seed, which is what uh, a lot of teams from the East are trying to fight over right now. So Celtics minus eight. We're going to take it. All right, then we get the Suns and the Nets here. Suns plus one, Nets minus one and a half. Ooh, hoo, 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 hoo. what do we get? All right, out for the Suns. Langston Galloway, Jay Crowder's out. That's kind of big for them. He's a great four for them. Um, Abdel Nader is still out, and Dario Sarek is out with rest. Man, rest, this is a big game against the Nets. Come on, no resting out here. But, um, yeah, that's going to be huge. I mean, Jay Crowder for their starters, Darius Eric for the bench, so a little lackluster scoring. That's kind of what we've seen by the Suns here this kind of last two weeks. Just we've seen games here where they put up like 89 points, less than 90 points, and that's not going to get it done in any game, truly. And then for the Nets, Kevin Rant is probably good to go. Uh, James Harden is out. Tyler Johnson, a game-time decision. Chris Chiazza is still out, and Nicholas Claxton is still out. But they're going to have Kevin Durant and Kyrie Irving out there, man. We'll see how they do. I think we got to go with the Nets here. The Suns team has been a little bit concerning. Like I said, this last week, I mean, their lackluster scoring department. I mean, if it's not Devin Booker, if Devin Booker is not going for like 25, 30 points, honestly, like more 30 plus points, uh, their, their offense is just very, very lackluster. So I'm going to take the Nets here. Kevin Durant's back at home for this Nets team. Huge matchup here. I mean, two in the East versus two in the West. Who gets it done? So we're going to rock with the Nets here. See how the Suns uh, kind of play here but uh, <sighs> can't trust it I mean we've got the high power offense of the Nets any given night especially with Kevin Randon so we gotta bet that Alrighty, let's keep moving on here. Grizzlies and the Blazers. Grizzlies plus four, Blazers minus four and I think the Grizzlies plus four is great value but let's see if everybody's in here uh, Jonas Valanciunas is a game time decision so hopefully he's cleared concussion protocols looking to go. Jaron Jackson is also out and then for the Blazers, Zach Collins is out. Derek Jones Jr. is a game time decision. So how can this Blazers team, can they finally win? Can they finally just win a game? Can they be clutch? Can they not lose by more than one point? And this Grizzlies team just beat them the other night. So we are going to stay away from this one because it is a back-to-back -back and we really don't like, you know, having back-to-back -back series, especially betting that second in a back-to-back. -back. Never goes exactly the way you think. So we'll stay away from it. But, uh, I mean, I'm rooting for the Blazers, folks. I'm not going to lie. I want to see Damian Lillard back on top, man. Let's stop this free fall that they're in. Let's stop their free fall. Try to get better playoff positioning here. I mean, folks, they fell down to the seventh seed. They were the fourth seed at one point this season. Fourth, fourth, now the seventh. Looking to keep dropping back. So we'll see if they can got to get the win here. Stop this free fall, but we're not going to bet it. All right, then we get the Cavs and the Wizards. Cavs plus seven, Wizards minus seven. All righty. Let's see who's in and out. Um, for the Cavs, Colin Sexton's out. So we are officially out on betting this Cavs team. No way. And then for the Wizards, Rui Hachimura is out. So uh, going to be a lackluster offensive-wise for this Cavs team. And we're going to go with the Wizards here, man, folks. Seven-game win streak. They're riding it. I'm riding them. They're trying to get into um, an actual playoff spot. I don't think they'll be able to. I mean, like I said, I mean, what do we got? Five and a half games out from that sixth seed. But, you know, trying to just at least secure that number 10 seed. Another win here. I mean, then, I mean, it's almost going to be a lockup here because I can't see the Bulls winning that much. And I can't see the Raptors winning that consistently. So, a huge game here for the Wizards. They get it done. We'll swallow the seven. No Colin Sexton for the Cavs. Their offense is not going to be there, folks. They're not going to put up any points like that. They're not going to put up any meaningful points. Don't think the Cavs are going to make it over like 90 points, obviously. Definitely not over 100. And we know this Wizards team, man. Russell Westbrook, Bradley Beal get it done. So Wizards minus seven. I love it. 
All right, Bucks and Hawks now. Bucks minus six and a half. Hawks plus six and a half. Is Trey Young good to go? Probably not. That ankle, you know, we know it's nothing bad, but it still needs to kind of come down with the swelling a little bit. Everybody's good to go for the Bucks, and then for the Hawks, Tony Snell is out. Clint Capella is a game time decision, so we'll see. Trey Young is out, and Cam Reddish is out. So I can't trust this Hawks team. This Bucks team, they just played yesterday against the 76ers, blew them out, and I got to say they blow out this Hawks team. I don't think this Hawks team can keep up scoring-wise. Uh, Trey Young being out for them is absolutely huge. They weren't even ready to kind of take that next step, even with Trey Young, so I don't see them doing it without him. Let's see if Lou Williams gets into the starting lineup. He didn't in their first game without Trey Young, but maybe they change around their lineup a little bit. Um, Bogdan Bogdanovich is going to have to be absolutely killer for this team, but overall, this Bucks team is a little loaded, so um, and I mean they just had a freaking free for all game last night that they were all kind of able to not play a lot of minutes, so they're good for this game. Uh, they were able to kind of get their scoring up, so they're all they're already in rhythm for this game as well. We'll take the Bucks minus six and a half. Alrighty, last two games up. We get the Pacers and the Magic. Pacers minus 5.5. Magic plus 5.5. Probably going to stay away from this game. But let's see who's in and out for the Pacers. Jeremy Lamb's a game-time decision. Miles Turner's obviously out for the season. Um, Debonis' bonus is a game-time decision. And Goga uh, Badazi is a game-time decision as well. And then for the Magic, Terrence Ross, game-time decision. And James Ennis, game-time decision. Otto Porter, out. Michael Carter-Williams, out. Wendell Carter, game time decision. So, like we say, two not good teams. We usually stay away from them, and that's exactly what we're doing here. And then the last game of the night, the Kings and the Warriors. Kings plus 7.5, Warriors minus 7.5. All righty. For the Kings, Raquan Holmes is a game time decision. Darren Fox is out. Marvin Bagley's out, so they're not going to have that good offense. Buddy Heald is going to take like 33s this game. For the Warriors, Kent Bazemore is out, Damian Lee is out, and Eric Poshkel is out. Um, we're going to go with the Warriors minus 7.5 here. This Kings team is absolutely not good at all. We know that uh, De'Aaron Fox is a huge part of their offense, so him being out is absolutely huge. Steph Curry's on this MVP run. The only, the, only, the only downside I see of this game is that we know the Warriors kind of play down to their competition, which is never good, but this Warriors team trying to kind of, once again, keep up pace here. Here in the playing tournament. I mean, they have a nice lead over the Pelicans here at the 10th seed for four game lead over the Pelicans from the 10 and 11 seed. But any win here just adds to that lead, adds to them kind of having, you know, more comfortable lead ahead of them for the Pelicans and more games that they could potentially take off, you know, not must win game every single night pressure, you know, lowers on them every, every game that they win. So, Warriors minus 7.5 may seem like a lot, but this Kings team is absolutely trash. Steph Curry gets it done. Kelly Oubre Jr. has been getting it done off the bench as well, so we love that. Alrighty, so that's our moneymaker for tonight. Celtics minus 8, which has just tipped off. Uh, Nets minus 1.5. Wizards minus 7. Bucks minus 6.5. Warriors minus 7.5. Swallowing a lot of points here, but we're feeling confident um, that uh, the better teams are going to get it done today. Alrighty, so let's head over to our NFL Draft Prospect of the Day. And today we are looking at Shakur Brown, cornerback from Michigan State. So we'll break down the stats. We'll look at some tapes, see how we're feeling about this man. Because, I mean, we don't have that many days left to kind of analyze and judge talent before we get to the draft. We've been on a 73-day NFL Draft countdown looking at an NFL Draft Prospect every day. And it literally just flew by just like that. So... We're trying to fit in some last ones up here. Who's going to impress us a little bit here? So let's look at Shakir Brown. So here we go. Shakir Brown, Michigan State corner, 5'11", 190. All right, solid. I, you know, I want my corners to be like 6'2", but not bad with the 5'11", I guess. <clears throat> so we'll see how he plays. But three years at Michigan State, freshman year, played in seven games. Uh, what do we got? Uh, six total tackles, one interception, one pass defense, no forced fumbles or fumble recoveries. 2019, once again, only playing seven games, 23 tackles, one interception, five pass defenses, no forced fumbles, no fumble recoveries. And then 2020 this season, seven games played again. I mean, he only played seven games. Jeez. Um, 25 tackles, five interceptions. Oh, yes, sir. Four pass defenses. All righty. So getting better. But what happened here in 2019? What is this man's injury? What happened with Shakur Brown? Let's quickly bring that up. Why did he only play seven games in 2019? That's not good. 
All righty. He missed the last six games due to an undisclosed injury. All righty. Shakir Brown, red shirt, sophomore, defensive back. Undisclosed is warming up. Okay, that wasn't anything. He missed the Spartans' last six games. When was this? 2019. Yeah, so he missed the last six games due to an undisclosed injury. All righty. All righty. So that's a little uh, insight on him in the 2019 season, a little injury. All righty. He got to a bowl game in 2019. He did play in the bowl game. So let's see if they won that. We like to judge bowl games very heavily, folks. It tells us kind of where you are. If you're stepping up, you have a month to prepare for these games. You're facing, you know, kind of equal competition offensively, defensively. So he gets to the bowl game in 2019, able to kind of play in that game. So that's fantastic. So here we go against Wake Forest. They get the win. He had three total tackles, no interceptions, no pass defenses, no forced fumbles. But let's see what the defense collectively held them to. 21 points. No points in the second half. Great defense. Lockdown defense. So we'll take that. They get the win. Locked them down defensively in the second half. We'll take that. 2018, did he play in the bowl game in 2018 as well? He was a freshman here. Let's see. He did, but they got the loss. What do we got? Uh, no tackles. He pumped returned for four yards. And that was really it. What did they do defensively? Oh, close game. Juice. Oof. Lost seven to six. Yikes. Unfortunate. But um, all right. So not too bad in the bowl game in 2019. Got it done decently. And then some good stats here in uh, 2020. Just uh, seven games, you know, played because of the short season. Let's see if he played in all those games here. 2020. Seven games played. Michigan State played seven games as well. All righty. They went two and five. All righty. Not the greatest. Uh, but overall, not terrible stats here. Definitely going to have to see what he does on the field. But I'm all, I'm excited for these five interceptions just this year alone. So stats just decent. Nothing truly great. Nothing, you know, standing out like, wow, eyes popping out of our head. Wow, wow, wow. Nothing like that. But we get a nice little four-minute highlight package of Shakur Brown. So let's see. This is the top 11 plays of Michigan State cornerback Shakur Brown. So let's see how great these 11 plays are. If we're talking about 11 top, top 11 plays of them, these all better be guys. Gosh darn good, correct? So here we go, Shakir Brown. Let's get the number on him, 29, just in case we have to follow him around the field. So here we go. Roll the tape. First play in the red zone. Already, I'm loving it. If he's locking it up in the red zone, that's what we want. All right, so here we go. In the red zone. Shakir Brown, what do we got here? Oh, yeah. All righty, there he is. Top right, brings him down on third and eight. Fantastic. So let's watch him from the start of the play. Now we know where he is. Here he is, top right corner just he has kind of outside kind of zone here nothing he's gonna play whatever kind of gets outside the right hash mark here so great 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 right here breaking it down knows that this receiver is going inside now just watching the quarterback sees this kind of running back slip out into the flat a little bit then goes up and makes kind of a little bit of a breakdown sees where he's gonna go then goes and makes the attack third and eight knew that he had a kind of knew that he had eight yards to kind of play around with so he didn't have to go and make that kind of you know initial tackle he probably could have and I would have loved to see that if he can kind of go close out 10 yards and make the tackle without getting juked but he played it perfectly in the red zone it's third and eight you know you have eight yards to kind of play with go up and make the tackle brings him down you know three yards short of the first down that's pretty solid play right there right there we love it all righty here we go against Rutgers this time all right, a little bit of a comeback route, and he's able to kind of just make the surefire tackle. Perfect. Let's watch him up here on the screen. Does he get beat at all? Take some right to the edge right there. All righty. Bad little throw right there. Bad catch. Something happened where this ball just kind of didn't go that far, and the, the wide receiver had to come way back for it. It ends up for like a two-yard loss now. Uh, so fantastic. Able to kind of make up, come up, and make the play. All righty. All right, from their own 10-yard line now, defensively, what do we got? Oh, he's coming up to make the sack for the safety. Yes, sir. Cornerback blitz. Let's watch it here. Here we go. 29. Just right here, lined up outside. 
Goes up, blitzes right off the rip. The quarterback isn't even looking his way already right off the rip. He initially looks right, and uh, Shakir Brown is off the left side blitzing. So the quarterback doesn't even see him. He comes in on block, untouched, and he brings down the quarterback. Do they count it as a safety officially? That is the real question. They may count him down right at the one-yard line. But look at this man go. Wrap him up. Bring him down. Yes, sir. I would say that's a, probably a safety, no? That's pretty good work there. Um, did not look like a safety, though, unfortunately. They didn't give him the two points. But good hit there. All righty. Another play against Tulsa here. Another blitz. Is he blitzing again? Oh, he's blitzing against Tulsa all day. They can't stop him. They cannot stop this man blitzing. All righty. Once again, just kind of coming off the cornerback spot right here. Here he is. Once again, the quarterback is initially licking to the left side, not even knowing that Shakir Brown's coming off the edge. This extra blocker's trying to block him. He doesn't get outside there. Uh, this running back, that was a bad decision there. I think he had like a little bit of a run or uh, uh, he could go off for a route, but he probably should have stayed in blocked, honestly. But hey, he comes in unblocked. Brings them down. Another sack for this man. Yes, sir. Cornerback blitzes. We love it. All right. This time against Northwestern. Number eight ranked Northwestern. And there it is. That's the pick. Yes, sir. Closing out. Coming off of his assignment. Breaking on the ball. Beating the receiver there. And that's a nice interception. Do we get a replay of this? We'd like to see a replay from the back end of this play. And we do. All perfect. All right. We got anything good here? Uh, kind of a little bit too late of where he was coming from. But e hey, either way, he comes up. He read the situation. He read the quarterback. He read the play. He read the pass. And he went and made a break on the ball. Right position, right time. I'm all about it. That's a nice pick here. All right, against Indiana, number ranked 10, Indiana. Ooh, bad pass here. This is an awful pass here by the quarterback. Throws it way too much inside here. And, hey, great defense. Didn't even get kind of burned by this man. True kind of, you know, 50-50 ball that was thrown because it was such tight coverage. And he just wins the inside position. He never gives up that kind of inside positioning. Able to kind of still cut off that wide receiver coming back in. And he makes the play on the ball. Great hands. Great concentration to make the pick. What is he doing after the pick? Can he go all the way? No. <laughs> what about like tw uh, 15, 20 yards maybe return? All righty. Good interception there. Once again, I mean, just great work, great technique, never got burned, no real separation there. Quarterback just kind of threw it up for some reason, whether he thought the wide receiver was going to win or uh, thought the thought it was open, but it wasn't. It wasn't. <laughs> Deadly mistake there with that interception. Great work. Love it. Do we need to watch it again? Do we really need to watch it again? Got pressure coming off the edge. Definitely helped them force the pick. That's why, you know, great defense, you know, is all team. Everybody does their part. And, hey, he he did his part. You know, the defensive end, you know, forced the error throw. He makes the pick. Fantastic work. All right, back against Northwestern here. Number eight ranked Northwestern here. Oh, once again, just an absolutely garbage pass on fourth and four. And does he take it all the way? No, 10 yards short of the end zone. Do we get a replay of this one? I would like to see a little bit of a replay. A flag on the play. Who are they calling it against? Oh, yeah, perfect right here. Yeah, takes it all the way. Do they call a flag on him for pass interference? A little bit of a jersey grab at the end because the receiver kind of ducked down, and he did kind of grab him a little bit. You can kind of see the yank. So interesting to see if they call it pass interference. Most likely on that play, we do see the flag come out. Overall, decent play, though. Uh, unfortunately, it does end in a penalty, but still decent coverage. I mean, not really letting him get anywhere. Try to duck down inside. Unfortunately, did grab him. All righty, here we go against Illinois. Back in the red zone here. Oh, bad throw, though. Bad throw that does come off for an interception. He sees that he, or he kind of knows that he does kind of have help over the top here. So he does play it a little less shallow here. He does kind of let him get behind him a little bit. And uh, that quarterback threw that one absolutely garbagely. Another return here that doesn't go too far. Not the fastest kind of returner out there with the ball. But, yeah, just kind of short of this ball, and he's able to make another play on it. Not the greatest play by him, but, hey, you know, you take what you're given. Quarterback throws it wildly. Was he kind of pressured again, or did he just throw it bad? Let's see. Let's watch the quarterback here. Any pressure here? Not too much, not too much. Guy coming off the edge, but that's what you got this running back for. He was going to pick it up. Either way, bad throw, great pick, doing what you're supposed to do. We like it. 
I don't know. If he got kind of all the way to the corner, I don't know if he would have been able to kind of be open. All right, here we go. Against, is this against Illinois again? Another pick? No, against Rutgers. Over the middle of the field. Cuts it off. And once again, the speed is not quite there. Can he go all the way? Crossing over to the left side of the field. One man left to be wide open. And he does score the touchdown. Yes, sir. Bringing that one away for like 25 yards for the touchdown. Made that quarterback miss. Look at that nice little juke back inside. And then the quarterback just... <laughs> look at look at this, this move right here. Whoop. And then the quarterback is sliding on the ground. Great blocking. Oh, yeah. Great blocking right there. Look at this man. Look at this block right here coming up. Here we go. Boom. Murder right here. Boom. Boom. Where are you going? Are you trying to bring down this return? We get in the six, too. We get in the pick and the six. That's a pick six. Yes, sir. All right, back in the red zone here against Indiana, number ranked 10 ranked Indiana over the middle of the field, able to undercut the route right in the end zone. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. But once again, kind of another bad throw by a quarterback here that he's able to kind of make a play on the ball on. So that's a little bit, you know, hesitancy looking at those stats and seeing how he got them. Just once again, he's staring down the receiver all the time. He doesn't have good positioning right here when the ball is thrown, but he undercuts the route. Just a little bit of a bad throw there by the quarterback. But, hey, once again, we're not going to knock you for doing what you're supposed to do. So, fantastic. Nice little tip pick here. He is gone all the way. Another pick six. This one, just once again, you know, another reason why he has five interceptions this season. Just some bad throws. This one just coming off the fingertips of the running back in the backfield. All right, what else do we get here? One more play. We get one more. We get one more play? No, that was it. All righty. So those were the top 11 plays according to uh, who who posted this. Big Ten Network. So you got to kind of take their word for it. Top, top 10 plays of Shakir Brown. Solid play out here. Absolutely. But didn't really seem like he earned any of those interceptions. No kind of real great coverage. No down the field 50-50 high pointing the ball. But, you know, we're still going to give him credit for the five picks. Being at the right place at the right time. Never really truly getting burned of what we saw. So... Just solid play out there, but Shakir Brown, nothing great. Nothing like, oh, my God, I have to go draft this man right now, first-round pick. So, um, all right, so that was Shakir Brown today, folks. Solid, solid player, solid player. We'll see where he goes. But, uh, all righty, that's going to do it for us today. Thanks for tuning in. Thanks for listening. Thanks for watching. Let's see if anything has broken while we were live. The Nets say Kevin Durant is available to play today. So, fantastic. We will still take the um, uh, Nets minus 2.5, plus or minus 1.5. That's what it was. Alrighty. Well, that's going to do it for us today, folks. Get ready. Draft week is upon us. Five, four days out, however you want to call it. Alrighty, folks. We'll see you tomorrow, folks. We'll see you tomorrow. I think we're going to be ordering our kind of top um, players in their position for... Oh, Sabonis is out now officially, so that's not good for that Pacers team. Uh, but either way, tomorrow on the show, we are going to kind of order our rankings uh, position-wise for the draft, getting us ready for our own mock draft, getting us ready for our own live draft show. So, um, alrighty, folks. We will see you tomorrow. Live, noon Eastern. Like always, folks. Come on, come on. Y'all don't know now. Noon Eastern every single day. Come on, get it with